Wow. Who is playing all these games? A lot of games. I mean, I don't even want to clean anymore. I just want to play. <laughs> When somebody is looking for an exterior cleaning company, they're looking for professionalism, communication, responsiveness, and then following that will be your price and things of that nature. But to run a successful business, you have to be professional. We work with a lot of professional people that spend so much time taking care of everyone else that their home's not organized. So. They're looking for someone to help them to get their lives together. Whether it's with their organization, decluttering. I haven't cleaned my refrigerator in so long. It's normally because they just don't have the time to do it. And that's what we're there for. That's what you're there for. When, when we first come into a home, we do a walkthrough to determine the amount of cleaning needed and to figure out how many hours we're going to need, level of buildup and so forth. So as I walk through, I check things like the window sills, window tracks, baseboards. We're going to be dusting these rooms and then we are going to vacuum and mop. We're also going to work on the kitchen, typically kitchens and bathrooms. Those are the longest time that you're going to spend in a home because there's a lot of detail there. I learned this early, to focus more on what the client wants versus what you see first because it comes back to customer satisfaction. Now, if we have time, we go into the things that we actually see. You always want to be all-inclusive. You want to offer up front all of the services that you offer and that you're capable of cleaning. And you always want to make sure that you're constantly educating the client so that they trust you as a business. After we've done the assessment, we make sure that we've captured some really good photos of the home. We take pictures of torn screens, anything that has been damaged prior to us doing any work just so that it's transparent on the estimate. But we also take pictures of the multiple surfaces that we've offered to clean, and we upload those to the estimate using Responsibid. And then we put it all together. If it's a very intricate quote, we discuss it as a team during a sales team meeting. And if not, as the sales rep, we would just email it off to the customer, and they're good to go. We price our jobs based on the amount of work. We price it by square footage, whether it's a standard or a basic clean versus a deep cleaning or a move out cleaning. Pricing is usually a quote at first, and those quotes can change. When I first meet with a client, I don't tell them my hourly rate. We go through the house, I calculate how many hours it's going to take, and then I'll tack on an extra amount, maybe, you know, 20% more time. If it's quite comprehensive, I might tack on 30% more time, and that will give me a bit of wiggle room so that if, say, a stove takes longer to clean or a bathroom, you know, a glass shower door, it will give me a bit more leeway. And I'm usually right on when I estimate an extra 20 to 30 percent. Then I'll just give them an end figure. They don't need to know the hourly rate and you don't really want to mention that up front because it might scare them. Something that we track is what is our average ticket price. And when I first joined the company, we had a lower ticket price. As we started to grow, a customer, say, would put in a request with Jobber and say, I want to get my windows done. And now we have a sales team. We would train our sales team, well, if they're asking to get their, a quote for window washing, don't only give them a window washing price. Quote everything around the home that's dirty. Quote everything on the house that isn't dirty and just have their stats on file for the home or the property. By doing this, we were organically giving the customer the opportunity to see what other services that we offer. But then through integrations that we do with Jobber, we were given the opportunity to bundle services. So we could say, well, we know that you wanted window washing, so here's our a la carte pricing. But if you get window washing, roof cleaning, and siding, we can bundle that and give you 10% off. You always wanna be upselling even when the customer hasn't asked for it.
One of my go-tos, firstly, really is your word of mouth. Just getting out there and introducing yourself. If you're a residential, start with in your neighborhood. <laughs> One benefit, you don't have to drive that far. As a company that's now 18 years old, our marketing budget is 5% of our gross revenue. That being said, there are so many resources when it comes to marketing. When you're first starting out, it doesn't have to be fancy. You should get Google verified, the Google guarantee stamp. Then you get a check mark when you come up on Google that you are Google guaranteed. So you are a guaranteed, a recommended service provider from Google. There are things that you can grow into. So now when we go to a home, we use dope marketing. And after we've completed cleaning a home, a five around postcard goes around to the five neighbors that, hey, we were just in your neighborhood, let us clean your home. And that generates income and revenue as well. I have found that when people are looking for a cleaner, they want things fast, fast, fast. So on the main page of my website, I have the link to fill out the online booking request form because sometimes people are looking for cleaning services late at night. You know, they work all day, then they come home, they make dinner, they do chores. It's a good idea to have those things in place because that's when your customers are going to be looking for you. Another method of marketing is your current customer reviews. So you should be getting reviews on Google and Facebook and everywhere else, but primarily Google from every single customer that you service. There are tools as you work your way up and they're not very expensive. We use nice job because it integrates with Jobber that as soon as you close a job out, the customer gets an email saying, please leave us a Google review, a Facebook review, a Yelp review. So definitely capture reviews from your current customers. What I also recommend is in advance, put it on your website, talk about it with your clients, do your walkthroughs at the end. If there's anything that your customers does not like or something I miss, please give us an opportunity to fix it before going out and leaving reviews, we ask that like wholeheartedly, we ask that give us an opportunity to come back and fix what wasn't pleasing to, to your liking. We don't want this to happen to anybody, but we have gotten five-star reviews on jobs that went horribly because we remediated the issue immediately. Field crew communicated to the customer, field crew communicated to the office, and to me, what happened? We fixed it, we took care of it, we paid for it, and we were fine. 